Uh, check it out. Don't let it happen overnight. Robbery, lottery. Okay. Um, I want to, uh, as mayor, I'm sure, like I say earlier, you was notified of the murders that occurred under your watch. How did it affect you mentally and emotionally about the uh, gang murders in your city, especially because you knew dudes from everywhere when you pull up and there's somebody you, you knew? I would go to every murder. Yeah. I would go to the scene every murder. Crip, pyro, prostitute, didn't matter. Because to the person's family, mm -hmm. it meant something to them. It meant something that I cared enough mm -hmm. to come and say, I'm sorry. Right. And I'm going to get at the bottom of this and I'm going to fix it. I can't bring your child back, but I'm going to make sure that whoever did this to your child mm -hmm. is going to get what they deserve. Now, check this out, friend. This is important to remember in life. And all of y'all that, that's banging, remember this. The life you save may be your own. You right. think that life operates in intersections. It does not. Life is global and it's totally interconnected. So, I went to a murder scene one night mm -hmm. in uh, Tragnew Park. Mm -hmm. Three little girls on the way to a skating ring were murdered. Damn. They were murdered by some more Crips. How I got to that murder scene was my public relations man said, hey man, you got to come here because the father of this little girl say, he not going to bed until he talks to you. Dang. So I went there, mm -hmm. and I didn't want to see this man because I had a little girl too. But when I saw him, he looked me in the eye and said, Mr. Bradley, I want you to hear my daughter's last words. And, man, I did not want to hear that because he was crying, yeah. and he was in my arms. Mm -hmm. And he said, my daughter was laying in the gutter, shot. And when I got to her body and grabbed her, she looked at me and said, Daddy, why? And fell dead. Damn. And he didn't have an answer. See, and none of us have an answer to what is going on with our people because it makes no sense. Nah, no doubt. And I was going to ask you, was it, it's been 50 years since, like you say, the Cribs came to Centennial. I mean, is there a solution or will it be another 50 years of this? The solution is simple. Jesus said, love conquers all things. It believes all things. It hopes all things. And for you youngsters who are watching this and saying, oh, he's a Jesus freak, no, I'm not. But I've lived long enough to be in the penitentiary, okay? And I've seen cats that was not my race, mm -hmm. was not my color, was not my kind, but I know what they knew, that I was unjustly in prison, and they would come to me and say, here's shower shoes, man. You know, here, bro, here's some cookies, man. Here's some potato chips, man. We see you. You ain't supposed to be here, man. But we love you, brother, because of what you stand for. We give you this because this is all we could do. I remember one day I was in the hole, mm -hmm. and the cats made me a, a birthday cake. I didn't know in the pen that a birthday cake is a burrito with a candle <laughs> stuck in it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Or they were saying yeah, things like, yeah, man, yeah. we're going to get you a Cadillac tonight. <laughs> right, so I'm right. thinking, how you going to get a Cadillac <laughs> right, up in here? Right, 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 right. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm a square. Yeah. I mean, I've done some things in my <laughs> right, life, but right, right. I ain't know who ride up. Right, but, you right, know, right. And cats roll up, and they hand me a cup of cocoa with some coffee in it right, right. and some creamer on top, <laughs> and they said, there go your Cadillac. Yeah, yeah, and I'm like, birthday. see what I'm saying? <laughs> but for me, I understood that for men in prison, that was the best they had. And because they gave it to me, they gave me everything they had. That's they right. gave me everything they had. And these was Crips. I mean, I didn't sit down with Nazis. I didn't sit up with Jews, Muslims. And what I know about mankind is this. If you show a man love, mm. it's hard for him to deny it. No, you got a point there on some level. You definitely got a point. Now, let me ask you this, though. How did that prison, you know... Um, stay how did it affect you physically mentally emotionally financially as being a man of your stature coming from where you came from knowing what you know how did it affect you in those areas well i lost everything mm -hmm. lost my house lost my cars lost my jobs and i've never regained those things Man. but if you ask me mm -hmm. do i feel good about the decision i made mm -hmm. i do because let me tell y'all something ain't nothing worse than a dirty cop 
No, no and, doubt. And he's the, re, the, you think a snitch is low. You got a cat parading around in your, new, you, your neighborhood. He in a car you paying for, burning up gas your mom and daddy buying, rolling around, throwing you up against the hood. But guess what? When he get done, he going to cop or he going to blow. Feel me? He in the same game you in. Right. You go to the pen, he get a medal. He get a medal. But he getting paid. Right. And everybody know who I'm talking about. I ain't got to say no names. Right, right. They finally busted the people that I was talking about. Right, right, right. You feel me? No, I, yeah, but check exactly. this out. The DA that had the original case on the Compton PD for slinging dope mm -hmm. and for dope coming up missing, when that report went to them, guess who they busted? Me. You. Feel me? So I learned something. It ain't just the police that's dirty. It's the judge, the DA. Because guess what? <laughs> Once that money start coming in, feel me? Everybody wants some. No doubt. And this is why Jesus said it's the love of money that's the root of all evil. Mm -hmm. Money will make your homie turn on you. Yeah. It'll make your woman tell on you. No doubt. Because they just want to have a little bit more than the next guy. Man. And before we get out of here, um, you got a book titled The King of Compton, Assassination of a Dream. How was that inspired? Well, I dreamt mm -hmm. when I was young um, of stopping this thing, you know, because I understood it. Mm -hmm. I lost friends on both sides. Right. The first guy from a crip neighborhood that got killed in his foolishness was on the football team with me at Centennial. And he was like a big brother to me. Mm -hmm. He looked out for me, even though he lived in a crip neighborhood. And he would say, little brother, look, come on, man, go home. Stop lifting weights. It's getting dark. We can't watch your back. Mm -hmm. He knew I was going over on the Pyro side. His name was James Irvin. Mm. Somebody shotgunned that brother to death in Watts visiting his girlfriend. And Dang. when he, when, when the coaches said, well, look, man, James got killed this weekend. This was a good man yeah. who looked out after me because I was only in the ninth grade or tenth grade playing varsity. So I learned, brother, that it's good people on both sides of the fence. We just don't take the time to get to know them. But here's what you should know. And I want everybody to hear that. I got more friends that are Crips and from Crip neighborhoods. Then I do pot rouge, and you want to know why? Why is that? It's more of them. <laughs> well, you definitely right about that, but you know what? As as time went on, don't get me wrong, whether it was through getting money or, you know, having to line ourselves with them in the pen and stuff like that, you know, I, I feel the same way you feel about them. You know what I mean? Crips, to me, not my enemies, you know? And I would be a hypocrite like I tell a lot of dudes. How you how you was in the pen and the Crips had our back in certain situations and you come out here and call them a disrespectful name. See, that's fake to me. You know what I mean? So, you know, I, I, I feel the same way, you know, at, at this point in my life, you know, that a black man is a black man and we should, as long as they uh, respect themselves, you know, we should show some respect, you know, and it's the same way with us. But like I say, uh, Mr. Bradley, I really appreciate you sitting down with FG Unleashed and I'm sure the people out there are going to get a lot of knowledge and I'm guaranteeing they're going to want to hear from you again. Thank you very much. All right, young man. God bless you. Thank you very much. Take care. You're welcome.